the uh, other thing that I like, that we like about the fact that you exist, that you don't let us become complacent. But uh, the other thing is that you represent, I think, the cutting edge of where Democrats have to be if we're going to stay uh, strong competitors in these campaigns to put the people in that can bring the kind of change that we need. I always have trouble with the cutting edge things. I mean, uh, the blogging and the uh, and what you do is something that I'm going to learn about today. I'm not going to add it to how much she knows about this, but um, I just barely have time to read all my emails, and I never really get a chance to go to the blog. But that's big, and people are doing that. And I'm really proud that the Democrat Party has you in there making sure that we are in that ball game and that we, uh, I, I understand that the best thing about blogs is that the minute somebody says something that's incorrect, somebody else comes in and corrects it. So you don't have to worry about what somebody says because it can always get corrected. And so I'm assuming that we have you and your uh, others like you to thank for that. Now, um, I asked Brian, because one of the things I always worry about is if I'm saying something or getting to what you'd like to ask me. So I'd like to take time for a couple of questions, if that's okay. And um, uh, that way I would feel a little bit better that maybe at least I got one or two points that you wanted to ask about. So does anybody have a question you'd like to ask? Okay. What's been the biggest surprise for you since you became first lady in the the biggest surprise is how little you have to do to make people happy. <laughs> <laughs> they're filled with an autograph, they're filled with a picture, they're so excited to come to the residence, they're excited to have you come to their, uh, see their programs or read a book to their kids. And uh, it just shows, um, I think, how people feel so neglected and like nobody ever notices them. So that's one of the reasons why we try to open the residence up. I'm told that uh, last year we had 20,000 people through. Any other, how many of you have been there so far? Good. Well, we want to get the rest of you to this year. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, I always worry. I, I dread a little bit every time we have a group because I'm afraid they're not going to have a good time. But they just they just have a good time when they come, so it's really easy to want to have people there. And um, every Tuesday we have tours, so uh, even if you're just in town and um, and you're not a part of a group, you can just call the residents on any Tuesday and ask if you can become a part of a tour that's there, and uh, you can join right in. So um, we're really pleased to have people in, and Ted and I both, um, are trying to get out as much as possible because Ohio just has to begin to see it's a special place and we have to build on our strengths and our talents and our sense of caring about each other and uh, Ted and I both are trying to send a signal that that's what this administration is about and we can only do that if we get out where the people are what we them to where we are. Another question, okay. How, is the, how does the governor feel about uh, how things have gone so far and how happy, since you know more than any, better than anyone else, how happy is he in the job? Well, he, I believe, um, I mean, I'm worried about him a little bit just between us. That, uh, cause he always liked national issues are, and um, he seems so suited to the Congress. But he is a guy that always likes to be able to to solve problems and he has much more ability to help with things as governor than he did as one uh, casting a vote or uh, being a spokesperson for something. The part that is the challenge is the budget and uh, and I think he's wearing well the tough decisions that have to be made and because it is, uh, there's a lot of pain that's going to have to deal with these budget, or it's going to be there with these budget cuts. He wants the Republicans at the table with this. And so he spent a lot of time trying to build relationships across the aisle. Every week he has a meeting with the Senate leader and the House leader. 
and they talk through it about what they're going to try to accomplish. So uh, I think he's really proud of uh, the free on tuition. He, he's proud of the chancellor for the work he's doing with higher ed. Uh, we're starting to move in a direction that we can think can bring about educational reform. He's taking a lot of talking in the newspaper about his funding. When's he going to get that funding straightened out? But the will of the people is not there to do anything about funding right now. I mean, they want to know what you're doing with the money before that you that they already have before they talk about anything else. So we're moving toward um, a, a reform piece first, and what an adequate education looks like, and then we'll talk about the funding piece after that. And he's having to be patient with um, with the criticism as he tries to move forward in a transparent way so that, that the people can be brought along with what the view of education for the future needs to look like. We have time for about one more question. Okay. So um, let me go back to the back there in the corner. I'd like to address the question of divisiveness. Yeah. It seems to me that everyone, so many people in the public discourse are speaking about divisiveness. But when I have yet to hear someone start to talk about uh, dealing with it in a way other than you guys moving closer to me. Yeah. Even though everybody wants to solve divisiveness in their, with their, from their perspective, and I'll point to myself as one person feels that way. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more of an issue of helping people learn and do something new rather than, um, and I'm not sure what the solutions are. I just think that that's where we have to start, is to learn how to do it. Well, and there are ways to do it, and that's yeah. what I'm calling it. I'm asking you to do that. Well, moving, moving closer to you is moving closer to the people that others want to shun at the same time. I mean, we're sending a signal that everybody matters and that there's no point in trying to to uh, get this administration to try to take a stand or, or uh, do something against one group as compared to the other because everybody matters. And so we, we try to go into every group and embrace the diversity in the state. And in the new vision that we're putting out for education reform, we have as the vision uh, building learning environments that foster and nurture creativity, innovation, and global competence. And that global competence means sensitivity to the cultures of others. And it also means that by embracing all of the people that we have in this country, we are better for it. And this is the way we're trying to do it, with, uh, by example, showing that everybody matters, and then by the division for education, that we welcome the diversity in the state and we're going to not only learn from it, but we're going to gain from it. I hope that helps you out, and I really appreciate what you do and the fact that you let me be with you this morning. I, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your work.